Hello homeschoolers! Welcome to the land of Kakiak. My name is Laurel. Today's video is a, it's kind of like along the lines of my prep and chat videos. I finished prepping something this week that I'm going to show you. Specifically, we're going to be talking about some writing resources today. I have three to cover with you. Firstly, I want to talk about the writing that I've been cramming in over the summer <laughs> with my rising eighth grader. It's writing and rhetoric. This is book five, Refutation and Confirmation. So this summer, we started out, we were doing the revised McGuffey's fourth reader, and I have a writing notebook, a companion notebook that goes along with that um, book. And so we, we did that at the beginning of the summer. Then um, I had signed him up for writing and it's called intermediate writing at this co-op that we are starting this year. I wasn't sure like what that was gonna be or anything. So uh, exactly, I didn't know if that was gonna be like a full curriculum or if it was just kind of gonna be light, you know? But writing is something I take fairly seriously as his teacher. So my plan was to perhaps to do uh, if I had been left to my own devices with him, I would have just done that, uh, kept doing the McGuffey Reader Companion Notebook all summer, and then I would have done this, his eighth grade year. Well, what happened is I got asked to teach the writing class. I was originally assigned to some other classes, and I don't know if it didn't work out with whoever they were having doing writing, but I had expressed that I enjoy writing and stuff like that. I actually wanted to be the helper in the class because I wanted to see what I could learn. <laughs> and then I don't know what happened, but the writing teacher, I guess, wasn't available. So I got asked to do it. So there was a particular writing curriculum because I was like, oh, um, could I just do writing and rhetoric with the class? And they were like, you know, because that's what I would have done at home and it's the series that I have I'm more familiar with and I think it's really I'll talk a little bit more specifically after I get done with this whole sort of like story this whole narration that I'm giving you right now about writing and rhetoric but it is uh I feel like a very enjoyable like kind of almost like a relaxing course courses and it is hitting writing it's like a it's just totally different than anything else I've seen. They're probably, I mean, I haven't seen all the curriculums out there, but of the ones I've seen that are very, like, you know, formulaic, this is completely different. I'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. Anyways, that, they said no, I had to use this other curriculum that they already had. <laughs> so I was like, okay. But because I, I really did want him to consume this course, I decided, spur of the moment, to cram it into, <laughs> into this summer. <laughs> I think I mentioned before that I was doing it. And if you look, you see all these little, <laughs> I took my sticky notes and I just went through the book. I was like, okay, I have about this many days worth of lesson days over the summer, you know, cause we school year round before uh, we start co-op or whatever. And so I just divided up the book into those many slots. And I just kind of, you know, uh, it's not like an exact number of pages, but I kind of roughly did the math. And then I kind of, depending on where that put me in the book, I may have adjusted a little bit on like which section or back a page or forward a page because, you know, it depends on what the pages were covering because there's also like reading in here and stuff. Anyways. So I think I've got 30, I think I just counted, I've got, this is where I am right now with them. We actually did writing this morning. I don't skip anything in the book. I do every, we do every single exercise in there. I'm like, I'm getting my money's worth. We're doing all the things <laughs> in the book. And to be honest though, it's enjoyable. And my son like enjoys all of the activities pretty much. He's very introverted, so he doesn't want to do any of the more like theatrical sort of readings or anything, but I'll do them because I don't mind. I'm, <laughs> I'm outgoing. 
So I don't, I'm expressive. I don't mind. I'm like, give me an opportunity to be dramatic. And I'm like there, <laughs> but he likes it. He, he has a good sense of humor, but his, his weirdo mom, but, uh, so he enjoys all of the activities in the book. So we do them all anyway. So we're on track. We'll be fine. We will just get this done this summer. And then he actually will be in my class in for writing intermediate writing for the upcoming year. I've never taught writing to anybody else, but my own children. And I've never used the curriculum that I'm about to tell you about. It's called the right journey. And we'll talk about it in a little bit more detail here in just a second. I'll show you how I prepped for the class, what I ended up with and kind of what I'm thinking for the year. And um, I am asking for prayer. <laughs> Okay, and what came in the mail this week, uh, or actually came last week, but then I'm going to get starting on it, reading it, is The Writing Revolution 2.0. So this is the new version. I pre-ordered it like months ago. I looked at, there's a, I, I believe there's a, there's a PDF floating around of like the first version of this. I think it's called, it's called the Hawkman Method, right, for writing. I have it. Somebody sent it to me and I looked over it and liked it. Anyways. I haven't got to go through this yet, but I know I mentioned it to you guys like months and months and months ago that I was going to, when I got this, I was going to read it and I would um, give you guys an update on it. So just know that that's like in the works. The reason I'm interested in this is less so, not for a straight, um, not for a straightforward like, like co composition course or anything like that. But um, I was looking for something for writing across the subject, something, some sort of writing exercises for across the subjects to enhance learning and to give me something to evaluate how their understanding of these subjects is going. So that's what I was hoping to glean from this book is guidance on what to assign across subjects and across grade levels um, for writing within, you know, things like history and science and stuff like that. Okay, so I don't really have a whole lot. I don't really have anything else to say about this except that uh, I'll be reading this and um, you'll be seeing my thoughts on that as they come up. Okay, let's back up. Let me talk just a tiny bit about writing and rhetoric. So if you've not, if you're not familiar with this series, there's a teacher book and a student workbook. I know I've said this before, but like I buy all of my books used to save money and I went through and anything that was marked in the student book and stuff, I just spent some time one day like listening to podcasts or watching, <laughs> watching uh, Midsummer Murders <laughs> and Erasing. <laughs> And then I just have my kids write in notebooks so I can pass these down. I don't have to like rebuy these. They're not terribly expensive, but you know, sometimes you are like, I just need to know that I don't have to buy anything. Like, you know, I'm in one of those seasons right now. <laughs> if you've seen my budgeting videos, you know why. <laughs> Anyways, he just writes in a notebook. This is published by Classic Academic Press. It is based on the classical method. I love it. You guys, I really love this series. I'm really thankful I found it. It is giving my kids a kind of education um, that I would not have given them because I have no classical training myself. There are 12 levels. Now that does not correspond to like first through 12th grade. Level book one, um, which is fable, Start, you can start it in grades three to four. Book two is narrative one, also grades three to four. So you could do like, you'd cover those both in the same year, theoretically. Book three is narrative two, grades four to five. And book four, Kreia and Proverb, grades four to five. We are currently here, book five, Refutation and Confirmation, which is roughly grades five to six. So, yeah, we started this series like later, like I found it later on. And um, I had read an article or somebody, a blog, something had written one time. And they said that if you were starting late, you could just start at book three. And I remember I had like 
said that in a video or something and then somebody said commented and was like we use writing erratic just go ahead and start from the beginning so they don't miss anything anyways i was won over by this comment <laughs> It's like, I see it. That made, it made sense to me because you just go through it faster because it's, it's easy, but you're not missing anything, which, um, and he enjoyed it even though he was like in seventh grade or some sixth or seventh grade or something. He was doing what could be third or fourth grade work, but he enjoyed it and it was fine. So yeah, like, so we are going to be going through this book and I think nine weeks, that's how fast, cause you know, he's a little bit older, right? Um, so we can go through this quite a bit faster. We're not stretching this out over six months or, you know, four to six months or something like a normal, if you were doing it during a normal school year. Yeah, so I'm kind of thinking that I'm just going to squeeze in book six, which is called Commonplace. Either, I, I'm, I'm wanting to do it at some point during this year. Now, just, I don't really want to have, I don't want to have too much school, right? And I don't want to have like confusing when he's taking my intermediate writing class with this co-op, which is like a full year, like a full, I made it a full curriculum. I didn't go light on the kids. Um, so I think whenever that stops, we'll, we'll do another fast. Remember like in college when you would take summer classes over the summer that were like accelerated that's what I'm kind of doing with this, with these writing and rhetorics that are like below his grade level. Um, so there's commonplace and then book seven is, oh, I might, I'm these Greek words. I probably said wrong, wrong. Um, encomium and vituperation or is it vituperation? Because that's grades six to seven and book eight is comparison, grade six to seven. Book nine is impersonation, grades seven to eight. Book 10, description, books are grades seven to eight. Book 11 is thesis, grade eight to nine. Book 12 is attack slash defend a law, grades eight to nine. So you're, um, it was designed to be completed, you know, from between like third to fourth grade up to eighth grade. I wonder, I should look into what this publisher has for their high school writing. Anyways. I think this is great. I love it. It just is a totally different way of doing stuff. So they have, they give you a typical teaching week, like what they would do in here. And they do it in four days, I believe is their typical schedule. No, five days, sorry, five days. So it is so far, as far as I've done it up to this book, very teacher led, but it's very easy. It's completely open and go. I do no prep, right? And there are a lot of, they get this nice survey of like readings you know, through it, which I enjoy. So it's stuff that like I wouldn't, wouldn't be on a reading list. Um, they give this explanation about the, I think it's the progem in the practice of modern writing. It says, although the progem are an ancient method of approaching writing, they are extraordinarily relevant today. This is because modern composition developed from the progem. Modern writing borrows heavily from, oops, modern writing borrows heavily from many of the progem's various exercises. For example, modern stories are essentially unchanged from the ancient fable and narrative form. Modern expository essays contain elements from the ancient crea, the refutation and confirmation and other progem exercises. Persuasive essays of today are basically the same as the ancient commonplace and thesis exercises. In this series, you can expect your students to grow in all forms of modern composition, narrative, expository, descriptive, and persuasive, while at the same time developing unique rhetorical muscle. The program covers many elements of a standard English and language arts curriculum. In refutation and confirmation, so this one includes experiencing both the reading of a story and listening to it analyzing text that is organized in sequential or chronological order. Yeah, we've been doing like outlines in there too. Demonstrating an understanding of text by creating outlines, summarizing and paraphrasing in ways that maintain meaning and logical order within a text, comparing and contrasting two or more character settings or events in a story, drawing on specific details in the text. My, <laughs> my light died. <laughs> I just start, I don't know what I was saying. I think I was talking about what is it contained in this level? The last thing was determining a theme from details in the text, including how characters in a story respond to challenges. 
Anyways, there's a whole bunch more. I can't read them all. There's kind of the basic, the basic layout of this book. There's 12 lessons. There will be um, a reading at the beginning. And they'll have, like, this is funny, they highlight, you know, like little vocab words that you might mention to them what they mean. So this is the, this is the um, teacher copy. It's just like the student workbook, except it has all these little teacher notes in it. So this was telling us what um, the student will practice in this lesson. So there's like oral narration, oral narration, critical thinking, comparing and contrasting, fixing sentence fragments, building copiousness using adjectives, creating a dialogue between two characters, giving a dramatic reading and proofreading a paragraph. Then you read, and I believe you can get, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure you can um, buy from their website um, the audio files to, if, if you want to let them like listen to somebody read it and they weren't, they are like 11 or $12 the last time I bought, bought one. I didn't buy them for this level, but I did, I think for like the first two. But since I had to sit and be in lead anyways, I was like, it's not a big deal. If I just sit here and I just read it aloud to him now. Okay, then there's a tell it back. So there's a lot of like oral, like you're like talking back and forth with your student or students if you have more than one. So there's talk about it, they so tell it back. And then the talk about it, um, here's the, here's the, um, like the questions being asked, but see how it has like, it's telling you that there's a teacher note in the back. So at the back of that lesson, and I love this, this is why you don't have to do any prep or anything. There are these pages in the back of each lesson that correspond to all the questions um, in the discussion part. And a lot of times there's, um, like today we were working on an outline. We read a, uh, an excerpt from a story and one of the exercises was to do an outline of that story it's kind of like the reverse. Like a lot of curriculums are like, okay, write your outline and then write something like this is just deconstructing um, a piece of literature. So you have the piece and then you deconstruct it to its outline. And which I think is cool. That's kind of like why I don't want to miss out on these um, courses because it's like you're getting to see writing from two sides of two sides of a mirror. But Anyway, so he came up, my son came up with his outline, and then I sh we went over the outline that they had um, given. And again, it's like, it's kind of like, it's not like it's an exact perfect right or wrong answer, you know what I mean? It's like, well, these are the things they picked out, and these are the things that you picked out. But I always show them what they did, so he can we can talk about, like, why do you think they included this, and, you know, that kind of stuff. I look, did go over editing marks this year or in this book. Anyway, so there's just, it's completely open and go. You Like I don't stick obviously to their weekly schedule. I'm going at my own accelerated kind of pace with it to get through it faster. And I don't worry about, you know, obviously grade levels and stuff. I just want, I want to consume this information. Um, and it's kind of like writing is like one of those things where you only get good at writing by writing a lot <laughs> and it just takes like with things like grammar and sentence fragments and stuff like that like this the more they do them the better they get at it so I feel like a lot of this doing these kind of courses it may not be enough practice right away for the child to really be a proficient writer but as they like just keep doing it uh consistently this is why we don't stop in the summer or anything um you know they get better and better and also it's teaching me things to look for because like as an adult whose brain is done <laughs> growing you know I'm able to like see that information and I hold on to it actually a little bit better right than my young my younger student so it helps me be a better teacher to go through these curriculums as well. It's teaching me. Like I said, the classical method and the pro gym is not something that I had any experience with at all, but I really like it. <laughs> if you have any questions, more questions about writing and rhetoric, and I didn't answer them before I was like unclear with my ramblings, um, I'm going to link their website down below for you. 
and or, or feel free to you know call, leave in the comments any questions you have for me that you think I might be able to answer from my own experience. Okay, so what I finished working on this week, and I have been working on it for a couple, probably like two weeks straight. Um, but this week I put some like real like oomph into my effort to get it done. I was dreaming about it. it is my intermediate writing course, and I'm going to show you the resources that I pulled from to plan it and put it together. So I guess what they wanted was some, uh, they're intermediate, I guess it's like middle school age, right? So there's, there could be quite a range of skill in students, you know, between sixth, seventh, eighth grade. Maybe I think there even might be like some ninth graders in there possibly. And what I was given to use is the right found, no, the right journey. I will link their website for you too. They said because they had permission to, you know, it was copyrighted. So I guess they had permission to reproduce the materials. I'm just to give you my thoughts on it. I obviously I have not used it in the class yet. And I will just give my thoughts on what I was able to figure out what to do based on what I had. So what I did is uh, I just put together kind of like my own, this is my own like teacher text. I'd really like to make one of these for each of my students. I have 14 kids in my class this year, one of them being my own. I'm going to meet with the co-op president at the end of this week. I'm going to show her what I made and we'll see what she says. But so the right journey is the creator is she, I think her kids are all grown, but she is a homeschooling mom too. So she has a lot of experience with how homeschoolers, you know, uh, we're dealing with at home. And she has some videos. I will link her. I think there's a YouTube channel. I will find for you a link for, as well. Um, I did watch all the training videos that the handbook we got reference. Okay, so what I have, what I made is I made, obviously I made a cover, <laughs> but I made a kind of like a notebook for the kids to work along in. So let me skip. And then I put these like little divider pages in for my reference materials. So this is weird. This is weird. I don't know if you guys ever go to co-op. I don't know. You might come up with something similar. Some just kind of weird situations with co-ops. But so I was given the PDF of the uh, Writing Foundation's handbook. And also the there's uh, lesson guides. So there's only there's 12 lessons in here. And so I thought this and I was given oh this other document called multi paragraph writing foundations handbook, which is doesn't it looks like a um, it doesn't it looks like a work in progress to me. It doesn't look like it doesn't look like finished like this has like images and stuff like that. Anyway, so this is what this is a weird thing that happened. So I'm like reading through the foundations handbook and the lessons and I'm like like this is only for paragraph writing um and like the, the 12 lessons are only for paragraph writing and there are the multi-paragraph foundations handbook it's very similar to the paragraph but you know it's got the structure of a multi-paragraph so what there is, it's a four-step writing process. There's brainstorming, so you're making a brainstorm web. From that, making a keyword outline. From that, writing a rough draft. And then a final draft. So it's a four-step writing process. And in the foundation's handbook, the paragraph one, at the very end, there is a page talking about intermediate writing, which is what I'm supposed to be teaching, which is supposed to be multi-paragraph writing like essays and it says that there will be a lesson guide but there's not and you look at their website there's not even a multi-paragraph handbook either there's really only materials for paragraph writing so i'm wondering i'm not really sure i, get, I might ask the co-op president when i talked to her um this week it looks to me like they've got the paragraph writing curriculum um, and they're working on the multi-paragraph because there's nothing even, no intermediate writing on their website, no multi-paragraph um, anything resources on their website. 
it's just the foundations stuff, which is paragraph writing. I feel like this might, I feel like this all sounds so similar. I'm sorry if it's confusing. It was confusing for me. So I reached out to the president. I was like, am I supposed to be teaching paragraph writing or multi-paragraph writing? I would think in middle school, it would be multi-paragraph. And she was like, uh, both. Um, this is only the third year that my co-op has been in existence. So I think people are working out the kinks or whatever. I have my own thoughts on how I would do that. Yeah, I, I think it's asking a little too much out of one course at co-op that only meets once a week to teach both paragraph and multi-paragraph writing, especially when there's a high probability that my sixth graders will not be able to write a good paragraph. <laughs> also, so with this curriculum, I feel like it's just a handbook. It's just like talk. It's not lessons as in it's not an open and go curriculum. It's a it's more like read this. Here's some like blank webs and outlines. And then like here's the process. But then it's not giving you prompts. Um, there's a couple like prompt ideas. But like for the most part it's not saying like it's not spanning. It's not enough work for like a year of curriculum or anything. It's not an open and go. It's not like writing and rhetoric where, you know, you just keep working and it's open and go when there's nothing, you know, I don't know. It also, I will say with the right journey, they also have a component where there's a book that you can add like literature to this. You can combine it up with lit, which my co-op did not give. I don't think we bought that. So she is kind of like, come up with your own. If you want to come up with your own lit thing, the parents don't always agree about what authors you know and stuff so like you'd have to I'd have to like come up with like a literature list and then like bring it to them and then the board can tell me yes or no and I'm like well why don't you just tell me because I don't want to waste time picking out literature for them to turn around and tell me I can't like use something you know what I mean anyways it's kind of it's been a scramble it was like last minute change to have me teach the class nothing is ready to go I felt like the curriculum is not a match for what the course is supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, anyways, it's been, I feel like a little bit of a debacle, but I'm trying to make the best of it. So what I did the last few weeks is um, I made a lesson plan. So there's gonna be like, I roughly, I got the schedule, right? For the years, roughly 26 co-op class days. So, you know, I have 26 days to plan for that are teaching, right? And so these ones are gonna be covering paragraphs. They're gonna write two paragraphs during that time to that are typed up and turned into me, plus the activities and the homework and stuff I'm gonna be assigning to them, which I'll show you. And then this is all multi-paragraph, like three to five paragraph uh, essays. And these two, the writing prompts I just used were just really simple, like the first one is what would be your like ideal vacation or the perfect, the best vacation or whatever and why. And then the second one was like, what's your favorite, you know, game and why. And that could be a board game, a video game, a um, sport, anything like that. Something I didn't want them to be, I wanted them just to, I didn't want to overtax them. I just want them to just, just get the writing going. And so I just wanted to give them an easy prompt. So then the rest of them, I thought, I did take this course teaching the classics, which I've talked about, and I like watched the seminar DVDs this summer and you know went through the handbook or whatever. And I do like this. I've been wondering how I'm gonna apply it. That I've been wondering, and this just seemed like the perfect opportunity to kind of pair it with my writing class this year because they do you have to have something to write about, right? And I figured this already has literature selections in it that um, are very short. I'm gonna, so I decided to use the little, uh, there's like one, it's like an excerpt from Tom Sawyer. And then there's Ricky Ticky Tavi. Um, it's like something, what's the cobbler guy? Martin the Cobbler um, by Leo Tolstoy, The Taylor Peter Rabbit. I'm trying, I'm, I can't remember all of them, but there's like five little pieces of literature. And I, since I already watched the DVDs and he used those 
Adam Andrews used those readings and walked us through teaching theme, conflict and plot, setting, character, and style and context. I'm going to assign those readings to the kids and they're going to write me essays on those five elements. Not for each one, but like, you know, set, they'll, he'll, they'll read, um, I made myself a little cheat sheet over here. So we'll read The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, the excerpt, and they'll write a, an essay on the character, right? Character or characters. They'll be getting some literature, right? Some kind of lit, uh, but the focus is to write on it. I'm not even really so concerned that they get the right, <laughs> right answer or response so much as I'm, I'm only going to be grading their writing, right? that four step process and how good the writing is. I went through and trying to use the lesson guide uh, for the paragraph stuff and kind of had to kind of apply those elements all the way through if I could. Things like, you know, sentence type, thesis statements, conclusion statements, strong word choices, um, using clauses and varying sentence length, like some things like that to improve the quality of their writing. Plus, you know, just basic grammar guidelines and MLA, MLA formatting. Main points, supporting details. And like she calls it writing in chunks. Like for every topic sentence, you'd have a main point, two main points and two supporting details. And she calls that a chunk. So she kind of has her own like terminology for stuff. So they ha they would have their own little workbook and I just made them, I made it my own curriculum. I made my own open and go curriculum basically. <laughs> so they like first day, this is classwork, right? And we're going to do a writing concept. We're covering is paragraph brainstorming and keyword outlines. So yeah, I've got the writing prompt was your perfect vacation and why. So this is where we're going to work. I'll have like a, probably a whiteboard or something I'm working on. Uh, with them and we will start that process together. I just have a note down here. It says label the order of main points and chunks, right? Because that's part of the curriculum. It's a note from the writer of the curriculum. So I've tried to include those throughout my little open and go curriculum. And then, you know, I might just, I think they only had, yeah, one homework that first week, which was then to make a keyword outline from their brainstorming web. Anyways, I just did that all the way. I just like, tried to follow along kind of matching up those 12 lessons like covering that material in class until it was all covered uh, plus getting them writing and so they can't just be have writing once a week they have to be writing during the week you know I've got at least one to two days worth of homework you know of writing to do each week in between our meetings plus they're meeting with me so they're probably writing three times two to three two to three times a week maybe four you know depending on if it takes them longer than one session to work on something here's getting into the rough drafts she has a very specific formula of like having about eight sentences per paragraph so you know i go through some i, I put a lot of scaffolding in here like format wise to get them going. I built in some like checklists and things for them. I do, it says I'm gonna ask for parental involvement here. I'm saying, this is like right in here, like have your parents read this, <laughs> give you feedback. I can't check 14 students, like all their work in class. Like, like I just can't, like their parents are gonna be have to checking them stuff and I'm just gonna be looking at their final paragraph or their final papers. I'm trying to build in exercises to get them to evaluate their own work and like like by using like the checklists and stuff that she gives and grading rubrics and things that are in the curriculum and then having them think apply like okay what do I need to work on and what is a resource I could use to help me with that like it be it the grammar guidelines or a dictionary a thesaurus um, or something like that. It could even be the writing, like the hand, the foundation's handbook that I, that they get with, for taking the course with us. Like they could be like, oh, lesson 10 covered um, varying sentence lengths. I should reread lesson 10 or refer to the tips in there. So that's what I'm trying to get them to learn how to be reflective. So then Basically, once all of the elements of the writing process have been covered pretty well, 
I start taking away my little scaffolding because they've got to learn. They're not always going to have someone to like give them. I'll show you, you know, I did do one like this. This is for the multi-paragraph writing um, to have them fill it in. Like this is going to be a brainstorming web, right? But there's not, you're not going to always have those. You're, you need to be able just to like sketch those out yourself. So we start like, you know, we pull those out. We just give them the blank space and be like, okay, do your web, you know. Um, same with the rough draft. I don't like, like label out what the line should be anymore. Like they have to start knowing how to do that themselves from memory. I did give them some, you know, examples of formatting for MLA and stuff like that. So they can look at this, but they, they're gonna have to be able to type, you know, how to, I call it, you know, publishing. You gotta publish your paper so you can turn it into me. Okay, so that's, so that's what I made for them is, I gave them a class description for them and their parents, basically a syllabus. Um, our lessons, um, along with the writing prompt and the associated reading that would be going along with it. Um, I copied out, this is our, these are her writing terms. I just retyped them. And then all, all those class and homework pages. So if they missed a class, I wanted them to be able to just keep working in their notebook. Like there's no reason. Like if you had a dentist appointment and you couldn't come to co-op that day, just open up your book and keep working, you know. They should have everything they need in here. Okay, and then at the very end of it, I copied those reading selections out of my teaching the classics. And I can, I mean, I, I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know how much time, what I'll be able to all fit in to a class period. But um, here's the readings. And so here's like the adventures of Tom Sawyer. So they have all the readings with them too. So they don't have to come to class to get it. Like I said, I don't want them to ever have an excuse to get behind because they have all the readings already. I just like scanned them and made files. And then they've got the foundations handbook. Okay? And this would come, this does have some like examples in it. And there's even like videos you can go watch, uh, but they're not really geared towards students they're geared towards the teacher but the parents might want to watch those here this is what i thought would be helpful from it is when they have example paragraphs and stuff like that so i want them i want them to be able to have that handy so that they could look look at that if they're home and they're writing and they just sometimes you just need an example they've got this writing checklist and they've got this little rubric over here for a this, but see, this is more for this is all paragraph writing oriented, and I was like, but I need a multi paragraph. I mean, I think it's most it's mostly applicable. I mean, you're grading an organization content style and grammar, so I mean, I could apply that to a multi paragraph as well. And and that's how I'm going to be grading their final papers that they turn in. Of course, they have the lesson guide here. This is probably more for them to look stuff up. Um, and then I've got that multi paragraph writing foundations handbook here that I said it seems like it's seems like it's unfinished because and there's no lesson guide to go with that which um I'm assuming is going to be coming okay so this intermediate writing this intermediate writing course oh and then I made this for them too um I made them this actually I made this uh editing marks and writing checklist like cheat sheet so that, and then they could just like fold it in half and keep it in their their writing notebook, right? Um, so that is going to be my intermediate writing course. It's kind of like it's the right journey, you know, Laurel style, and then uh, teaching the classics, kind of applied in to have something to write about. Oh, and that was like a lot of work to get through all that, like a lot. Like there was a lot of hours <laughs> to plan all that. Yeah, I'll tell you guys how it goes um, and how the kids, how our experience was at the end of the year. I'll have to give you guys a co-op update. How did that go? How did the kids respond? I am really, I am concerned about it being such a range of ages. But you know, I would expect the older kids to be better at it and the, the younger kids to be 
it to be harder for them and that you know I'm like that's okay like you'll probably need to take intermediate writing again next year <laughs> until until you have it mastered and um, I'm I was like you know if they ask me if, I, if it works out well and if I teach it again next year I'll just like change out I might we'll probably follow basically the same format but just like change out the readings but yeah it's been uh all about writing lately so uh I will link to all the resources I showed you today I'll be back um, to talk more about what I learned from the writing revolution and happy homeschooling bye